Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be using tick data to backtest a strategy that will use the top level of the order book to initiate and close trades. So you are going to need some sort of tick data to run the example. I was able to get about an hour's worth of tick data that we will be using in this video from TD Ameritrade and the tick data returns the ES. At first glance, it appears that I'm missing data, but in reality, data is returned whenever there's a change in one of the columns. But what I want to focus on is the bid and ask price and also their sizes. From the very first row to about row 17, it appears that we didn't have a change in the bid price. I'm going to be using the high frequency package in R to clean this data and make it more concise. So if we go to our R script, we're going to load up the tick data and I'm going to be grouping the bid and ask price and also their sizes. I'm going to be converting that to an XTS object. And for now, I'm just going to convert the time zone to UTC. Let's go ahead and run lines 24 and 25, and we'll take a look at the quotes. So we have converted this to an XTS object. Now our next step is to only fill the NAs for the first two columns. Since I'm going to be aggregating these in one second intervals, I would be overstating the sizes if I fill the NAs for these two columns. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave these blank. Now in our script, we do that in lines 27 and 28. So only for the prices. And we're going to use high frequencies wrapper called aggregate quotes to convert my tick data into one second intervals. Now, since I'm using futures, I went ahead and specified the market open and market close. It defaults to 930 and 16. And by using this wrapper, we have to also change our column names to these specifically so we have the bid the offer the bid size and the offer size because this wrapper is going to go ahead and look for these columns to aggregate so i'll go ahead and run lines 27 to 36 and if we take a look at our aggregated quotes now we have successfully aggregated the bid and offer sizes in one second intervals. Now the next step is to convert our timestamps to New York time. And we're also gonna fix the issue with this very first timestamp by subtracting one second from the second timestamp. So we'll go ahead and run that from lines 43 to 47. So if we run that, and we'll take a look at aggregated quotes. We now see that the issue is fixed with the first timestamp. And now these are all in New York time. Now that we have our intervals, we can go ahead and fix the NAs for the bid size and offer. And I believe that's the very last thing we have to do to fix our XTS object. So I'm going to go ahead and run line 51. Now we don't see any NAs for the sizes. All right, now that our data is cleaned, I want to use this XTS object to create a strategy. What I noticed from the data was that whenever the bid size was relatively small, it would eventually tick down. Now here at this particular timestamp, we show that we only have seven contracts left to take out the bid. And effectively, the very next second, we see that our bid became the ask. So we took down one quarter of a point. Now this does not always happen, but I wanted to test to see how much of a potential there was to this type of strategy. Now I know that trading one second intervals would require very fast computers and it would also depend on our trading size. But for example purposes, I'm just gonna be using one contract. And what the strategy involves is taking out or removing the liquidity. So since this is relatively small, we're gonna go ahead and sell at the bid. Now when our bid size increases relative to the offer size, it will most likely mean that the prices will revert. So what I'm gonna do is add a couple of columns. One is just gonna be the total which is the sum of these two last columns and then i'm going to convert the sizes to percentages so that we can better gauge this so in the next block we're going to go ahead and add our total for the column and the bid and offer as percentages so if we go ahead and run this block now we see our percentages and our total. Now for the strategy, I'm just gonna pick the percentages where the bid is less than 5% as potential signals. So we're gonna be shorting whenever this column is less than 5%. And we're gonna go ahead and buy back our contract when the bid percentage is greater than 97%. That'll make the offer about 3% or less, indicating that there might be a reversal. So let's go ahead and subset those instances. And we do that in this next block. So you see that we're gonna pick instances less than 5% on the bid and also greater than 97%. Now for the open positions, we have a total of 34 instances. So again, I'm just testing if this theory holds because we would need ultra fast computers to take out the remaining contract in most of these instances. And for our closing XCS object, we have a total of 13 instances. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go through each row. I'm gonna pretend I'm selling at the bid and I'm gonna exit our position using the close table at the following instance where the bid percentage is greater than 97%. So here back in our script, 
we're gonna iterate through each row. We're gonna extract our entry bar to determine our closing bar. We're gonna make sure that the index of our closing bar is greater than the index of our entry bar so that it doesn't pick instances before our entry bar. Now, if the number of rows in our closing bar is greater than zero, we're gonna go ahead and extract the very first instance. We're gonna buy back our contract at the offer. If you wanna revert the roles where you're long instead, you would uncomment line 90 and comment line 91. But since we're shorting, we're gonna take the difference in points and we're also gonna add the trade duration. Now, since this was just about an hour worth of tick data, I'm missing a few exits. So I'm just gonna replace those with NAs. And finally, just return that entry bar. So if we take a look at our trades, we have now successfully added these last three columns that indicate our exit price, the number of points, and the trade duration in seconds. Let's go ahead and plot the cumulative sum of our points. So we're gonna go ahead and graph that using chart series. So we see that this strategy returned 21 S&P points, which is about $1,000 if you're using the regular contract in about one hour's worth of time. And our average hold time was about six minutes. So there's a substantial barrier to entry as we would need ultra fast computers. And as you saw from the data, our contract size would be around one, but the strategy has potential if you were to overcome those barriers and would be interesting to see this type of strategy in options or stocks in a faster moving market since this was overnight data. Well, with that guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. I'll provide the sample tick data so you can run the strategy. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.